guys, welcome back to Magic Wonder Channel. You are watching episode four of my journey in Egypt. You can check out my channel to watch the previous episodes and subscribe so you won't miss the next one. So here I am in the Upper Egypt in a city called Luxor. We are going to wander and learn of Egyptian mythology at Karnak Temple, Valley of the Kings, and many more. But first, let's look at the city from the bird's eye view by going on a hot air balloon. The company will pick you up on a colorful motorboat like this and feed you coffee and breakfast. This is a super early activity, but I really recommend you. I will show you the reasons later in this video. My name is Khaled. I am a player to be your pilot today. Everybody for this time? Yes. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Luxor is in the area of the ancient Egypt capital. There are countless of civilization excavated around here. Today, Luxor is divided by the Nile into two parts. The good thing about a hot air balloon here is that you can see the overall picture of the area. So you can get the sense of the connections between each site. The West Bank is the mountain area that you can find the Valley of the Kings and Queens and the Colossi of Memnon. And we are crossing the river Nile now. Where the East Bank here is more of the green with farms and residential area where you can find the famous Karnak Temple, Luxor Temple, Temple of Khonsu, and the prisons of Mut. So we just had a 45 minutes on the, in the sky of Luxor. Uh, we are so lucky to get across the Nile River to over the West Bank also. So this is Captain! Oh my god, Captain Khalid! This is Sinbad Balloon. So. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna go back and wake our girls up now and have some breakfast. A side note though, our hot air balloon landed in someone's banana farm. Seriously, so we had to walk across the farm here to get back to the van, really only in Egypt. The first site to wander today is Deir al-Bahari or the Temple of Hatshepsut. Pharaoh Hatshepsut was actually a woman, but for circumstances, she became the pharaoh and a great one. She built this temple dedicated to Amun or the sun god. You can read more great things about this temple on the internet, but what I really like to point out here are the reliefs around the temple. To show how great and expansive her empire was, Hatshepsut ordered the scenes of Egypt's battle, also um, the empire's businesses with the foreign countries. This temple was not the only treasure Hatshepsut left behind. She also built a pair of the world's largest obelisks. One of them still remains at Karnak Temple. Obelisk is just one single piece of the stone. Hatshepsut obelisk is almost 29 meters in height and weighs 343 tons. Karnak Temple is also dedicated to God Amun. Temple uh, in Luxor. This is the temple of uh, Egyptian civilization and it's supposedly the world's largest temple of all time. So it took more than 2,000 years of construction and was never actually finished. Each pharaoh would add his own halls into the temple ground for further expansion. The main feature of Karnak is its great hypo style hall which covering more than 5,000 square meters. There are 134 highly carved columns in 16 rows. These columns originally supported the main roof, and each column is carved with Egyptian hieroglyph and scenes of gods um, praising the pharaoh. The columns were erected first, the carving parts came after by each pharaoh, including the last great king of the new kingdom, Ramesses III, whom we also had a chance to visit his tomb in the Valley of the Kings. This is KV11, the tomb of, the tomb of Ramesses III. It is 125 meters deep. So we are here in uh, Ramesses III mm -hmm. tomb. According to our guide, he is one of the greatest king, I mean the greatest pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Limestone in here is not very strong, 
so you you might see like the pathway is quite complicated because sometimes when they dig and they find like the limestone that's not good, that's not strong enough, they just change the way to excavate, you know, yes. in order not to destroy mm -hmm. the tomb. So no planning? No, no. <laughs> I guess no planning. Just when you find like a bad one, they yes. change. Here you can see a litany of Ray, which is another important um, ancient Egyptian funerary text. It depicts the sun Ra in 75 different forms, and also a part where the pharaoh becomes the sun god after life. This was mostly used in the entrance of the royal tombs. You will find eight pillared burial chamber at the end of the tomb. The scene here is of Amduat or the Book of the Afterworld. It is divided into 12 hours of the night and each represents allies and enemies of the pharaoh. Just like the Egyptian sun god, this depicts that the pharaoh will ultimately live forever. The valley of the king's necropolis is full of mythology like this, surrounding Egyptian gods and legends. Here is the model of the site and you can see how most of them were buried deep into the mountains. There are a lot of ancient Egyptian funerary texts that were started in the New Kingdom. These texts are written inside the tomb for reference by the deceased and most of these texts were reserved only for the pharaohs, royal family and the favored um, nobility. The next tomb that we visited was of um, Ramesses the fourth or the KV number two. Um, right now, I'm introducing myself in uh, Ramesses fourth, the fourth, in his tomb. The, the reason I come to eat because um, I'm really like uh, the Egyptian uh, history uh, since I was in uh, high school. And this is like once in a lifetime that I have a chance to come with friends. Um, so yeah. It is decorated in bright yellow, also with scenes from Litany of Grey and also books of carvings. Don't forget to look up when you are in there to see all the stars, the scenes from the books of the heaven. <laughs> very much, very nice to meet you all and, and Egypt is one of me and my and other people bucket list so once in your life you have to be here so stay tuned for more awesome video from both Yay! Yay. We also visited um, KV6 of Ramesses the Nice for the last one. Scenes from the Book of the Dead and the Book of Caverns with um, astronomical ceiling. For the burial chamber, it was decorated with the Books of Heavens depicting the Goddess of Sky, Nut. The most famous tomb is probably KV62 of Pharaoh Tutankhamun. You need an extra ticket to go inside, but you can see the treasures and also the golden tomb that John Howard and his team found at Cairo Museum, making him one of the most famous pharaohs of all time, especially by the golden mask of his hair. What about if I say Amenhotep III? He was Tutankhamun's grandfather. So Amenhotep III was actually a very very famous pharaoh. This is also one of his many statues, the Colossi of Memnon. But his greatest treasure in Luxor though is probably his own court at the Luxor temple. This court is filled with beautiful 32 papyrus columns. There was also the colonnade of Amenhotep III that consists of seven pairs of 16 meters high open flower papyrus column style. Each column were highly decorated in carving and most likely in colors back in the days. And many more precious additions here at Luxor Temple by other pharaohs such as Tutankhamun himself and also the Ramesses II. 
Luxury is surely a haven for those who are interested in Egyptian mythology and ancient history. And next week, we will leave Luxor and set sail to float along this great river of Egypt, the Nile. I will show you what the Nile cruise is like and all the activities that we can do for this 5 days and 4 nights trip. Stay tuned by subscribing right now. Hope you are not overwhelmed by all the infos on the video today. Any comments are very very welcome. So um, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you again next week. Bye.